Guys, happy 2023, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, say hi to my bestie Squishmallow. He's now a football. Also known as the a basketball. Uh, football of our century. We are playing football with the uh, bestie Marshmallow. All right. Um, we're at Kalahari. Why? Weekend. Why are we at Kalahari? Who's crying? Who? Who are we celebrating at this retreat? Jesus! Okay. Jesus loves little sisters. Jesus loves little Jesus sisters. This is our bestie, uh, oh, we're getting glory. Glory. bestie tree glory. Your true picture of the tree. Little ones. Allie, I think you're in it. Allie is yeah, in it. Yeah, Allie. No, I was throwing Focus up. Hunter. He's saying hi. Uh, oh, he, he did uh, say hello earlier, oh. too. Oh. It's right here. Look at my bestie blue lion. What's its name? What's its name? Mm, um, Ballroom Saloon. That's his name. Ballroom Saloon. This is the intro. Ready? This is the intro. Welcome to Cali. Welcome. Uh, I don't know how much footage I'm gonna get on here, but I just hey. wanted to say hello. Hi. Oh hi! Hi guys, it's Amy. Yes. We're throwing. Hi. Hi. hi Patrick, do it for the vlog. Patrick, say hi to the vlog. Oh! Are you recording that? Yes. Oh, look, <laughs> they're in there. Actually, what my voice oh my sounds gosh. like. I just really like to make my voice sound okay, gurgly. I, I like making my voice sound Cameron. gurgly. I saw Cameron in there. Cameron! Cameron! Cammy! Cameron! Cammy Koo! Cameron! Oh, she was so cool. Cameron! Cameron! Look out your window! Elena! Lady! Look outside! Cameron! Why is she checking her butt? Hello! <laughs> they can't hear us. I'm done. What's up guys, it's Editing Alley. Don't you guys love when I do this too? Don't you love it when I start a vlog and then I don't finish it? Isn't it just like so cute of me to do that? I know. Well guys, I didn't finish that. <laughs> so I did a little something when I got back because I was in a little bit of a sad mood. Uh, no details, but I made a little something else for those people who actually want some encouragement. So there's another segment coming, but don't you guys love that I didn't finish the vlog? Yeah, that's what I thought. What's going on guys? It's Allie. Um, I actually today thought I would bring back reading a little bit of the Bible with you guys. I know that's like not really my main audience here, but I don't really care. <laughs> also, I'm definitely having a rougher day. Um, I think it's important to, to just be very forward and open with the audience and showing like the hard moments. It's very weird. I recently came back from a conference in Atlanta and then went to Sandusky literally the day right after I got back um, to literally worship God the entire time. So all of 2021 so far, I have literally been singing worship songs, getting sermons, reading from the Bible, um, getting deep in dis discussions about faith. But I came back doing really good until tonight. Something just really put me in a sad mood and I don't want to stay there. I don't want to stay in a sad mood. I definitely think it's an enemy trying to work against me after coming back from a really amazing um, past nine days of just like literally worshiping God. And so I don't want to stay there in my sadness. Um, people definitely disappoint. Um, but what's really amazing is that God doesn't do that to us um, and his love doesn't fail. And he has a perfect plan. Also, I'm really sorry if my voice is, like, scratchy. Definitely have been losing it, um, while I've been gone. Also, if you're, like, sniffling, that's my dog. He's laying on my bed. I'm not gonna do anything huge or super long. I honestly just wanted to read two chapters from Romans. Um, I just think it's, like, really important, um, to 
kind of start thinking about faith and how important our faith is and how um, there's kind of this uh, misdiagnosis of salvation and that people think that we have to do this and be a good person and we have to give to charity and we have to um, make sure we only have this kind of bread and this kind of meat and this all these things that are just like simple or very not simple that we have to be really good people and be kind to everyone and while a lot of these things are definitely really important it's ultimately not what saves us what saves us is our salvation that we get from Jesus Christ who died on the cross for you and for me while we were still sitting there while we were still sinners um, and ungodly people he still died because he loves us so much and if you believe it and you receive it and you make him your savior then you're saved and it's like a seal that can't be broken um, and he made it he made it so easy for us however being a christian isn't easy at all and believing that he's true and that he's faithful and that he's god is not easy um some people uh it makes it sound really easy all you have to say is i believe you lord and you're saved um and as simple as that may sound it's not very easy i'm really sorry my dog is like licking his paws right now so um Coda. Hey, Coda. You okay? We can so often um, just take that as it is and think it sounds very easy. However, your belief in faith it really must be true. It really must be true. You have to, you have to say that when you take him as your savior, it has to have some meaning behind it. It has to have some belief behind it. Obviously, Christians doubt all the time. We doubt that he's faithful sometimes. We doubt that he's real sometimes. But getting stuck at that is not what we should do. We should persevere and keep continuing in our faith even through the hard parts. What's wrong? Wait, he just jumped off my bed. So I don't really know what he's going to be doing in these next couple minutes. So just don't mind. But um, I'm going to read Romans 5 and 6. And this is just about faith and then our life in Christ once... Um, we have been spiritually reborn. Okay, he wants out now, so let me go do that. Okay, now he doesn't want out, I'm confused. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get reading before he starts barking at me, which will literally be any second. Um, so this is starting in Romans uh, chapter five. So therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have also obtained access through him by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions, because we know that affliction produces endurance, endurance produces proven character, and proven character produces hope. This hope will not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given, who was given to us. For while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will someone die for just a person, Though for a good person, perhaps someone might even dare to die. But God proves his own love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we have now been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from wrath? For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? And not only that, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received this reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in this way, death spread to all the people because all sinned. In fact, sin was in the world before the law, but sin is not charged to a person's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even those who did not sin in the likeness of Adam's transgression. He is a type of the coming one. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if by the one man's trespass the many died, how much more have the grace of God and the gift which comes through the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, overflowed to the many. And the gift is not like the one man's sin, because from one sin came the judgment, resulting in condemnation, but from many trespasses came the gift resulting in justification. If by the one man's trespass death reigned through that one man, how much more will those receive the overflow of grace and the gift of righteousness reign 
in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So then, as through one trespass, there is condemnation for everyone. So also through one righteous act, there is justification leading to the life for everyone. For just as through one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So also through the one man's disobedience, the many will be made righteous. The law came along to multiply the trespass. But where sin multiplied, grace multiplied even more. So that, just as sin, reigned in death. So also grace will reign through righteousness, resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is going on to chapter 6. So what should we say then? Should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless, so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin, since a person who has died is freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him, because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all time. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its desires. And do not offer any parts of its sin as weapons for unrighteousness. But as those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to God, and all parts of yourselves to God as weapons for righteousness. For sin will not rule over you, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Absolutely not. Don't you know that if you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to that one you obey, either of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But thank God that, although you used to be slaves to sin, you were obeyed from the heart from the heart that pattern of teaching to which you were handed over, and having been set free from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness. I am using a human analogy because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you offered the parts of yourself as slaves to impurity and to greater and to greater lawlessness, so now offer them as slaves to righteousness, which results in sanctification. For when you were slaves to sin, you were free with the regard to righteousness. So what fruit was produced then from the things you are now ashamed of? The outcome of those things is death. But now, since you have been set free from sin and have become enslaved to God, you have your fruit, which results in sanctification, and the outcome is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is it. I wanted to keep it short and sweet, but that's a lot coming from Paul. If you don't know about the book of Romans, it's written by Paul, who used to be Saul, who was this guy who killed a bunch of Christians. Um, but then he was totally transformed by the Lord and now he wrote these books so that we can read them coming straight from the word of God because God is ultimately the author. Well, Paul wrote this. It wasn't written merely just by Paul. It was written by Paul because of Jesus. Jesus was working through Paul as he wrote this for us. Um, you can probably hear my dog, dog barking outside, so I'm going to get moving, but don't get mis- uh, don't misconstrue anything that talks about slaves. We're not slaves in what you think the word slaves means. When we're born on this earth, we're born into sin, so we're gonna be slaves to sin. We're literally like carrying out sins daily. We're a slave to sin. That's like a human analogy that Paul was using. But when we are saved and set free by Jesus, we no longer are slaves to that sin. We're no longer slaves. We're no longer slaves to fear, but we're a child of God. I don't know which one sounds better to you. I don't, I don't like sin, <laughs> but we all do it every single day. Um, and Paul isn't saying that we can't sin. Um, Paul is just saying we should really, really, really try to not sin. We will never be perfect. We will never not ever sin again. We will 
we will continue to because that's the kind of world that we're in. But because of Jesus, we can be with him forever. We can get eternal life with no pain, no more fear, no more sin, no more evil. Just the perfect eternal life with Jesus because of him dying on the cross. Also, I think one thing really quickly, that I'll wrap this up, but like really quickly, people th seem to really hate religion. Um, and I don't even call Christianity or religion. I'm not, I really don't like that word religion, but this is what people say. Um, I think of it more as a relationship. It's personal. It's one-on-one -on -one and you, that's, it's you and God. It's not organized. People think, seem to really not like Christianity because they think that God sends us to hell if we're if we sin. Um, this is completely not true. From the moment we're born, we're actually already that's where we're headed is hell. That is how this world was created. We were already going there. But what Jesus did is he died took that spot, he paid the ultimate sacrifice, died the ultimate death, so that we would not have to go to hell. He made a way for us to go to heaven. He made a way for us to be saved. And that is what's so beautiful about the gospel and so beautiful about Jesus, is that he ultimately paid the price for people who hated him, for people who put him on the cross, so that we could live forever with him in a perfect eternal life. Um, so I just wanted to say that because a lot of people really think that God sends us there, which is not true. We send ourselves there. Um, but he made a way for us and people will reject it and they will continue to reject it. Um, but for those who don't, you're, you get the most amazing gift out of it. The most amazing, pure and powerful gift, um, because of the power of of Jesus. So I'm going to stop talking because my voice is getting super hoarse as you can probably tell. Um, but I hope that you got something out of this. Um, I think that was really helpful to my myself to just be able to read it out loud and just talk about the goodness of God and how we're saved um, because of him. So thank you guys for listening. Um, I don't know when this will be up. But today's January 9th. Hopefully I can get it up uh, early this week. But Love you guys. Thank you for listening. Peace.